if you are watching this video on YouTube after the fact, this is a quick clip of the entire discussion that we have had about mRNA, mRNA technology, COVID vaccines, and all that good stuff, because we just can't talk about a lot of it on YouTube. So you're going to have to go to one of my other platforms to see all of it. The links are in the description. But if I may encourage everybody to go over to Locals, uh, alisonmorrow.locals.com is where you can be a part of my editorial board and you can submit questions. I put the guests up uh, usually the day before, and then people submit their questions. And I'm going to go right to those because a lot of them are really good. I know we can't get to all of them because you got to go. Um, but this one I thought was interesting. Is she concerned that the COVID mRNA rollout will dampen confidence or create distrust in other therapies that use mRNA technology in the future? I am indeed concerned that uh, the rollout of this technology is in a lot of ways very sloppy. We don't have many, many answers as to what's happening. We don't know where all this mRNA is going, We don't, which is all cell types. So whether does it go to brain and uh, cells, does it go to neurons, does it go to your kidney cells? So um, does it go to your heart? You know, what proportion in different people, perhaps uh, the distribution is different. Um, so in if you got the vaccine, mRNA vaccine, some of it, more, most of it could have gone in one place, whereas very little distributed somewhere else. And, and so if it's given properly, perhaps if it stayed in the muscle region, you don't see that adverse event. But if it uh, went into your circulation, uh, if it got into your blood, then it potentially went everywhere else. The other issue that really concerns me is that I saw a, a um, sequence deposited in um, NCBI, which is um, maintained by NIH, the database. And so if you find any new sequences, you deposit it there before you publish it. And this is a sequence of uh, artificial mRNA. So this the mRNA construct was deposited from a patient uh, uh, and the blood sample was taken 28 days after the vaccine was given. So on the one hand, the vaccine makers say that this mRNA degrades very quickly and so it should get cleared away and should not last. But the fact that they were able to isolate mRNA uh, sequences, which correspond 100% to the, the vaccine mRNA sequence is very troubling. So it's been in that patient for 28 days. So if it's there for 28 days, not degraded, that is contrary to what um, Pfizer and Moderna tell us. And the second is if it's there for 28 days, why is it not making protein? So if it's not making protein, and if it's making protein, that spike protein, then why do you need a booster? Because it's constantly making protein. So these questions need to be answered. Why, why are these not valid questions? Why is that a misinformation or disin disinformation, I, whatever way you want to call it? I don't understand why is that? It's very, these are very legitimate questions. What would be a real world application of your concern about the things that you just mentioned? You know, if it stays in your system for so long, this could happen. Can you give me an, uh, an example of something like that? So th this is different, you know, it's different because like I said, it's non-self RNA, right? So if you wanted to, for example, if, when we try and do gene therapy, you do it for sequences or uh, genes that are uh, your own genes that are not functioning properly. So if you want to, for example, if something is not expressed uh, or some, some part of the gene is not expressed and so you're not making enough protein and then you give an mRNA for it, then uh, that would be different because that mRNA is yours and your cells have the um, the training and the ability to deal with that because normally they would be making it. So they have all the information to, to basically uh, know what to do with it. Um, whereas when you have non-cell for this viral um, protein being given or uh, message being given, our cells normally deal with it in, in context when the whole virus comes in and they have a way to deal with it. But now this is out of context. So we don't, we don't understand what's this 
context. And unless we study it, we don't know. It's impossible for me to say how long we have to look at it. And of course, there are other mechanisms which people have shown now that, and this Omicron variant sort of emphasizes that, that perhaps there are recombination events happening because we see some signatures from flu vaccine and HIV vaccine, uh, HIV, flu virus and HIV virus in the Omicron uh, strain, suggesting that there are things that are happening that we don't fully understand. So whether this, um, and, and there, there are publications that have shown that coronavirus can get integrated in your genome. That, what, that would, what that would mean is that if you, let's say, got, an, got infected and a few months later you got flu, and uh, you have symptoms, and people tested you for um, coronavirus using RT-PCR, if that part of the genome is active, you will falsely say that that person has COVID. Whereas mm -hmm. that, could, that is not true, because you really have to sequence that to say that this COVID region or coronavirus region that's being expressed in this patient right now is actually of a different strain than the previous infection. And you don't really find that information in publications which claim that there is reinfection. There are very few publications that show that, you know, if let's say I got infected and I got vaccinated and I got reinfected. So if my first infection was with the alpha variant, if I got reinfected six months later, the onus is on the person who's doing the study to show that my reinfection is not that I'm detecting alpha variant, but it's some other variant, delta variant, Omicron, you know, whatever variant you can choose. But you have to show that if the re if I got symptoms again and it's still the alpha variant, it's not a reinfection. It's probably something else, maybe flu or some other respiratory virus that's causing that. So, mm -hmm. and of course, we um, if you look at how many people who have severe outcomes have co-infection with other viruses? Because right now in children, there is the RSV infection going on. There's rotavirus infection going on. And in fact, CDC, if you go and look at their website, they said that in April, there was a huge uh, surge in RSV infection in children, which is not, it's not seasonal at that time. And yet you had that infection. Perhaps it's the co-infection that's contributing to more severe um, outcomes in people, both children and, and adults, but there is no systematic uh, documentation of any of that. So do I, um, do I, am I concerned that this M mRNA technology will get a bad name? Definitely, but again, uh, it's, uh, I, let's hope that we can solve this. Hope is stronger than fear. Before we get to the rest of this video, don't forget you can support my work by also checking out my sponsors and having a glass of wine or a cup of coffee in honor of free speech. The first is AllisonWinePromo.com, Allison with one L, WinePromo.com. You get 50% off of my favorite Argentinian Mulbacks and 50% off of shipping. They have switched out the three bottles from the last pairing, so check them out. Many of these are high altitude wines. They're very robust. They use no flavoring, no filtering, no dyes, and no excess chemicals. But if you need something to wake you up, like a strong cup of coffee, check out TwinEngineCoffee.com slash Allison, TwinEngineCoffee.com slash Allison. They've got a wide variety of roasts. These are high altitude, shade grown Nicaraguan coffees that are also USDA certified organic. They also do a lot of great work to help prevent sea turtle nests from being poached. You can support their work by also going to TwinEngineCoffee.com slash Allison and become a sponsor. And they'll even show you video of when the sea turtle nests that they're protecting are hatched. So check out my sponsors and support free speech wherever you are. Is there anything, though, that you would like to add before we wrap this up? Well, the thing that I would like to add for the scientific community and for people who are consuming uh, science through um, news releases or through sound bites, you know, that's not how it's done. So uh, I would say take a look at those papers, even if you see um, news, news media highl uh, highlights or headlines that look very sensational, go back to that paper 
read the paper, read their conclusions, look at the data, and see if the conclusions they have made actually match what they're saying. I mean, that's critical thinking that we teach our students, that I teach my students. Uh, have do you know? Not everybody will have probably the understanding of whether there are proper controls or not. But like I said, most of these studies will point out their caveats or associated with the study themselves. But um, you know, statistical analysis is complicated. A lot of these uh, papers use bogus statistical analysis, and they um, they just it's mumbo jumbo, and uh, that. So I think science has never been consumed in real time. I've said this in the past. And uh, when you, because science is changing, it changes in, uh, you know, as you uh, become, uh, you know, more and more information comes, your interpretation changes. And to say that what we had said, you know, one uh, year ago, that is the dogma is not correct. That's not how science works. So I think we have to take that with a pinch of salt. It's not, um, and so, and stop judging. I mean, I don't think people here are deliberately trying to, uh, just because the unvaccinated are not trying to kill anybody. They are, you know, your own immune, vaccines rely on your own immune system to work. And if you have a weak immune system, vaccines are not effective. Similarly, you will be susceptible to diseases if you, you have a weak immune system. So I don't think we can blame the vaccinate, unvaccinated. We can't, uh, we just have to take a pause. And I think vaccine is not the only way out. We have to look at other uh, um, solutions as well. Awesome. Okay. I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Okay.